Many scholars believe the Great Pyramid of Khufu was built by an advanced civilization prior to the dynastic Egyptians. Although the pharaoh Khufu did indeed build a number of pyramids, they were small in comparison and of poor quality. If the pyramids are older than we are led to believe by established historians, it's possible they could have been built during an age of higher consciousness. And to reflect this, we would see some form of interrelationship between levels of human consciousness and the macrocosm built within the structure. The shafts and chambers within the Great Pyramid are designed in such a way as to symbolize human consciousness. There must be evidence to support this. We know that Tutankhamun's Nemesis is a symbolic representation of the focal and subconscious minds. With its vulture and cobra reflecting this, the vulture hunts during the day and has been used to symbolize the sun in many ancient cultures. The cobra, a nocturnal hunter, represents the night and the subconscious. Being the larger of the two, it shows how the subconscious has more capacity and scope than the smaller vulture and the focal consciousness. Within the pyramid, the king's chamber represents the masculine focal consciousness and the physical expression of the soul, hence why there is a granite coffer inside. The shafts penetrate the outer surface of the pyramid, meeting the sun, the energy source behind the focal consciousness. These shafts also line up with masculine star constellations of Orion and Alpha Draconis. The queen's chamber, on the other hand, represents the feminine, the subconscious, the spiritual aspect of our conscious triad. The shafts to the queen's chamber terminate short of the surface, depicting the hidden, the unseen, this is the subconscious. Both shafts from the Queen's Chamber point to feminine star systems, one being Sirius, the energy source behind our subconscious, and the sister star to our Sun in a 25,800 year orbiting binary. Water has always been used to symbolize the energy associated with the Moon, the spirit realm, and the subconscious. We also see the Queen's Chamber connected to passageways and shafts leading to watery subterranean chambers under the pyramid. Time was an important aspect in the lives of our ancestors, with many of their great engineering projects reflecting this. Based on the work of Johann Oldenkamp, who suggests that the Giza Plateau is a giant clock face, depicting the great 25,800 year cycle, we can see some interesting astrological correlations. If we assume that the three main pyramids correspond to the stars in Orion's belt, we can also assume that the three small pyramids are also representations of Orion's belt at different time periods. Orion's belt appears vertical on the horizon in today's night sky. The last time it appeared horizontal was approximately 11,000 BC. We now have two reference points on our giant clock face. With these points we can place our zodiac wheel with the 12 signs and the dates of our great year. Here we find the sun rising in the east in line with Aries and setting in the west over Libra. You will also notice the old Nile was positioned next to the watery sign of Pisces and the watery glyph of Aquarius. This is also known as Noah's Ark, from Aquarius through to Aries. And finally, we see the Sphinx positioned in Aries, the sign of the ram. Is this why we see so many ram-headed Sphinx throughout Egypt? 